So with the days getting shorter and night drawing in, I think I just have enough time to get this video done before it gets dark outside. Well, that's not going to really matter too much because, as you'll have noticed by now in these past few videos, that I have got new lighting in the shed, which is now a lot more brighter, which will certainly help with these videos, especially over here on my little workbench where I do these reviews. But anyway, welcome back to another review from Class 47 Peter. And today we're here to have a look at a model made by Hornby, as you can see. This is the third Hornby model I reviewed on the trot in these reviews. But that doesn't really matter. Because we're here today to have a look at a new release. And you all know what this model is because I mentioned this in the last review. This is the all new Hornby Wainwright, and I have pronounced that correctly, H class in the South Eastern Chatham Railway livery. Now this model was announced last year and I actually got to see the engineering sample of this on display at Worley that year. And as soon as it was announced, I just knew I had to get one of these models. They have announced four versions. There's the Mont Olive Green livery, or Southern Green, whichever you choose to call it. There's also BR Line Black with the light crest, which is available as a separate model, and they also do that livery in a train pack. Or well, they've announced that model as well as a train pack, with a different room number and with the BR push pull couches. And then of course there's this version, which like I say is the South East on Chatham Railway livery, which is the one I wanted and the one I bought. And this model was released just at the end of October. And I had this pre-ordered from Rails of Sheffield. Which I had pre-ordered at the end of August. Mid-August. Yeah, it was mid-August when I had this pre-ordered. Now, this model has been pre-sold out almost everywhere. I know prior to doing this review, I did see some of these models in stock on Hattons, but whether they're still in stock in Hattons now, I don't know. Because that was noticed before I filmed this review, so they might still be on Hattons, or they might have sold out. But I do know that most places have been sold out to pre-order, so I think I was lucky to have managed to have got one of these pre-ordered. And it has literally just arrived in the post. Took a little while to get it, but that doesn't really matter. What matters to me is that I've got this model now in my hands and that was more important because I just wanted the model at the end of the day so it doesn't really matter really how long it took to get here because she's here at last and I have already given this model a test run and she runs beautifully and you will soon see just how stunning this model really is. I should also stress at this point that this is not going to be the first review of the H-Class because other people have already done a review on this model already but either way enough with my chatting let's get this model open and see what it's like now this is currently the only H-Class that they've released so far because the others are not due out until next year in January apparently so off comes the box sleeve and just look at that. You can already see how stunning this model is. And I haven't even got it out of the packaging yet. So, this is the sleeve of the box, which you get a photo of the model. Of which livery you get, on the front. On the back you get the power classification, which is 1P. Which, of course, that would be the power classification for a loco in real life. Then, of course, on the back you get some brief history of the real locomotive, which you can pause and read if you want. I will not stop you. It, it's a brief history about the class and also about this particular one. Which is number 308. So I'll put the box sleeve down to one side. Well technically on the floor because I've got nowhere else to put it. And then we'll just get the packaging out of the card tray then we'll put that down to one side 
And then here we have the instructions for the locomotive. Which is going to be all what we've seen before. On the back it tells you where to fit the brake rods. And inside it talks to you about lubrication and where to put the oil. Fitting the accessories. Fitting a DCC decoder and adding sound, and also the body removal. So I shall get that put into my folder of instructions later. Then I'll just remove the outer plastic sleeve, like so. And we'll now have a look at the details that we get in the bag. So in this bag of details we get, you get a brake rod to fit under the loco, then you get these two curious bits of detail which I've got no idea what they're for, I know where they go, they actually go underneath the model but I don't know what they're used for in real life. You also get a couple of name tension lock couplings, obviously for the front and the back of the model, and last but not least we also get a couple of vacuum pipes as well. Okay, so with the detail parts covered, let's get on with the unboxing. So all I've got to do now is just to simply undo this clip at the front of the box. And then gently lift the model out. Like so. And then I'll just simply fix it back together. Put that to one side and we can now look at this model in closer detail. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to talk about is the weight. There is quite a lot of weight in this model, so it is heavy. And that's what we want. Because this is only, after all, a small loco. And so it needs all the weight it can have to be able to pull a train. Again, these models need weight anyway as I keep saying in these reviews because it's important because it creates the traction for these models to be able to pull trains now we move on to the detail firstly we have sprung metal buffers as you can see so if you like your sprung buffers then they'll make you happy I don't have much care for them as I've said before but they're there regardless we have some very nice detail on the buffer beam that very nice fine yellow lining on the front there and some rivet detail as well as a separately fitted brake pipe and you've got a little coupling hook there and the locomotive's running number 308 crisply printed on the buffer beam there we've also got some separately fitted lamp irons on the running board just under the smoke box door there we have some very small separately fitted metal handrails which look very nice. The smart box door is nice too, which has details such as a separately fitted lamp iron, of course, a separately fitted smart box door darts, and of course, the smart box door hinges, which the smart box door hinges and the darts are painted silver and they look really nice. We also have a very nice chimney, which does have some rivet detail on the bottom there, as you can see. You could add a smoke generator unit in this if you wanted to, but I'm not going to bother. But it is a very nice chimney, as you can see. You have a separately fitted metal handrail running alongside the boiler there, which curves up and up the front of the smoke box door there, which is very nice. And again, just like on the real Lauco as well. You also have this little bit of detail on the side of the smoke box. Don't know what it's there for, but it's there and it's painted and it looks nice. I just love the crisp lining on the boiler bands, that just looks really really nice. Very nicely done. We have some pipe work on the side of the boiler there. A small separately fitted handrail on the wheel arch there. Lovely crisp lining on the wheel arch there and a gold trim on the front there as well. And there's also a crisply printed builder's plate there which says Asford Works on it as you can just about see. There is some visible daylight under the boiler and it's hard to see in this light but there is actually some detail inside there as well which you can actually just about see which is meant to look like 
inside motion which of course it doesn't work on the model but then again if it did it would be more expensive but it's there and it looks really nice and it's something nice to look at on the front of the tanks there's some separately fitted handrails on both sides you've got the water filler caps as well which don't open but we don't really expect them to anyway superb crisp lining on the sandboxes there and on the running plate I mean just look at that there's even some rivet detail on them as well and it's the same story with the steps as well we also have some pipe work just under the cab there behind this footstep which looks very nice we also have some nicely painted sanding gear as well which is made of plastic which I do like because as I mentioned in the last review the sanding gear on the Batman models is made of metal and that can cause problems especially if it bends out of place and causes the model to derail and of course it then also connects with the track and causes other problems then when it touches the track so then you have to bend it back into shape so I like how on Hornby models and others it's made of plastic and not metal at the front of the loco you also have some guard irons too we can't leave out the side rods we've got to give them a mention and they just look fantastic to look at and they will be fantastic to see them move as well you can just about see some rivet detail there on the frames of the model on the chassis frames and that looks really nice I absolutely love the shiny brass effect on the dome. In fact, actually, if you look very, very closely, if I just zoom in, you can actually see me with the camera there. It's actually reflecting in the dome, and that is just fantastic. Because this livery does have that shiny brass dome, and that just looks absolutely amazing, the way it's been done. It looks absolutely fantastic. And it gives that model that bit of bling as well, with that dome. Well, they've also got me waving them as well in the reflection. Here it has as well. That's just fantastic. You've also got the safety valves there as well, which look nice. And underneath that, you've got that bit of detail there painted. What I believe is meant to be either brass or copper. And of course, you've got the separately fitted whistle as well. We've got glazing in the front cab windows and some very nice lining around them. And gold cab window trims there's also some rivet detail on the front of the cab there as you can just about see now the cab roof is not the most interesting to look at but there is some nice rivet detail on the cab roof and just look at this excuse me giant finger but the cab roof vent opens something I wasn't expecting and to be honest it didn't really need to open but when you do get it it is a nice little bit of detail and a nice feature to have on models that looks great on the cab doors you've got some separately fitted handrails there as well and just look at the cab interior the gauges the dials the regulator the pipe work in there it's all painted up and it just looks fantastic and it's just a lot the real thing even the little handle there is painted as well and that looks fantastic at the back of the cab you've got guard irons in the windows and glazing in the rear windows as well and some nice detail on top of the cab there we also have some separately fitted lamp irons as well we also have some very nice crisp lining on the bunker as well as a separately fitted brake pipe and a coupling hook there's rivets lining and the locomotive's room number on the buffer beam as well and just like on the front of the loco we also have sprung metal buffers now the livery on this model is absolutely stunning this is the brown livery the South East and Chatham Railway which is brown and you've got a very nice even coat of paint and there's no errors in it either it's a very nice even coat and just look at all the lining on this model there's lining on the water tanks there and you've got the absolutely stunning SENCR letters there crispy printed on the side and the accurate font as well and also the South Eastern Chatham Railway logo 
crisply printed as well and also the locomotive's running number 308 which is also very nicely printed on the bunkers as well and all the lining you see on this model really does lift the livery and it just looks absolutely fantastic even the wheels are painted in that brown livery as well and that just looks stunning even the guard irons on the back of the locomotive and the front are painted brown as well and that just looks superb now moving on to the coal in the bunker which we're now going to find out if it's removable or not I think it is but there's only one really one way to find out Yeah, it's removable. There's some very nice detail in the bunker, don't get me wrong, but I don't fancy taking the plastic coal load out to put real coal in because of that gaping hole there. That does worry me a bit. I will still be putting real coal in the bunker. It just means that I'll be scattering it on top of the plastic coal load which it is something you can do you don't necessarily have to take a coal load out to put real coal in so I just slot that back in excuse the dog in the background so I shall, like I said, be scattering a very small amount of real coal in the bunker there on top of the plastic load. We now move on to this side of the loco, which there is some detailed differences on this side. You can see there's pipe work under the handrail there. And on this side you have the Westinghouse pump, which has some very nice lining on it. And also you can see some pipe work connected up to the front handrail at the top there running down alongside the boiler which looks very nice indeed and something I very nearly forgot to mention and this is on both sides of the model you've got lining there just under the smoke box and I like how that little bit's been painted as well and there's even some rivet detail on it as well which looks very nice and also there's that little bit of detail there as well on both sides which is on the running board Oh, there to focus there. There we go. Not sure what that little bit of detail is, but it's there. Moving on to running performance now, and you can see straight out of the box, she runs as smooth as pudding. The model runs exactly how it should, straight out of the box. No motors burning out or anything like that. Nice and smooth. Well, like all models, it, we obviously need running in. Moving on to the loaded test run now, which as you can see, this model is easily able to haul a rake of small southern couches. 
which is about the amount of coaches that they would have hauled in real life because they weren't really meant to pull massively long passenger trains. Now I know that this is not a long train as this is only three coaches long but even so it still shows why the weight is important because if this model didn't have any weight this model wouldn't be able to pull these coaches. So overall then, the H-Class is a stunning model. I can't fault it. It's not hard to see why or what makes this model stunning. Get one. Well I say get one, if you can get hold of one of these, then by all means do so. Because they are worth adding to your collection and they are well worth the money. So overall, I'm going to rate the Hornby Wayne Wright H class. A 10 out of 10. This has been Class 47 Pizza reviewing the stunning Hornby H class in the South Eastern Chatham Railway livery. And I'll see you again soon for the next review. Don't know what I'm going to be reviewing because I haven't got anything else to review at this point yet. But until then, hope you've enjoyed this review. Don't forget to subscribe, check out my other videos, and I'll see you again next time. But until then, ta ra.